Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the main stage, uh, main track of Cost Cup 2023. Uh, my name is Bo Qiang, or you can call me Bob. Uh, I will be your host this afternoon. And we still have 25% of Cost Cup, so uh, please enjoy the awesomeness uh, and give you any job. Uh, the next talk is about uh, Unicraft. It's a leaders foundations project that provides a toolkit for uh, creating performance optimized unikernels. Uh, our speaker, Mihalis Papas, is that right? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, will give us an overview about the project and also uh, not not only the feature but also about the amazing community behind the project. So uh, please, if you want to leave a note or you want to follow the talk, you can just check our shared note. The link is on the website, uh, uh, coastcup.org. You just check this session, and you will find the shared note. Please contribute, and also about uh, another link about uh, Slido. So if you have any question, just leave it on the Slido, and we will use that later. So uh, okay, so so uh, now please join me in welcoming Mihalis. Hi, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Okay, so um, thanks everyone for um, attending this talk. Uh, my name is Michalis. Um, I am a software engineer at the Unicraft um, startup. This is a startup um, behind the Unicraft open source project. Um, and um, of course, I'm also an open source contributor um, to Unicraft. Um, my areas of expertise are um, visualization, um, ARM, and security. Um, so. I will start um, talking about evolution in uh, virtualization and especially in the cloud. Um, so I think you are familiar with um, the current evolution. So um, the first diagram shows um, the classic uh, hypervisor-based approach. Um, notice that here I don't distinguish between type 1 and type 2 hypervisor. But in any case, um, what you can see with the dotted lines is the deployable um, unit, which, of course, on top of the hypervisor would be an entire operating system along with libraries and applications. Um, gradually, the industry um, moved uh, towards containers as they were um, easier to deploy, um, smaller images, more lightweight, and so on. Um, and of course, these, the, the host could run on top of a hypervisor or it could run um, bare metal, depending on the um, deployment. So um, comparing these two, um, I use um, a few metrics. So the image size of the virtual machines, of course, it's big, right? They are big images. Um, and that uh, takes time to deploy and so on, especially if you have many of them. Um, while containers are um, pretty small. Um, of course, the boot time of um, VMs is relatively slow compared to containers that start much faster. Um, similarly, the, the footprint of the OS is pretty big compared to a container. Um, and the runtime performance used to be um, much slower on the VMs, but nowadays with hardware visualization extensions, uh, normally uh, VMs uh, are as fast as um, the native case, so I put them on, let's say, similar um, level right now. And when it comes to security and isolation, however, um, I think we made a compromise as um, initially the um, isolation provided by the hypervisor was strong, um, while the containers have a pretty weak security model. Um, so if we have a closer look at uh, containers, we can see that um, you have the container runtime um, that runs on top of the kernel, and um, then you have um, several um, interactions uh, until your application runs. And um, of course, as you may know, this is based on C groups, and uh, you can even have um, in some providers your um, containers being on the same host with other customers containers and so on. So in general, this is not a very strong security model. And if your host runs also on top of a hypervisor, then things start looking a bit like this, right? Um, so can we do better than that? And this is where we think that um, Unicraft fits in this model. Um, so Unicraft is actually a, um, an open source SDK that allows you to build unikernels. And uh, unikernels actually, this means 
um, single application OS images, which means that um, an operating system image that only runs one application, um, which is useful for microservices in the cloud, or for embedded systems, or even for isolated functionality um, on top of a hypervisor for safety critical systems and so on. Um, and these um, uh, operating system images are very, very much customized to the requirements of the application, which means that they do not um, contain any functionality that is not required by the application. So we call this extreme specialization. So uh, let me show you what I mean. So normally you have an application with various components and then it requires some libraries, again, with various um, uh, functions and so on, and that runs on top of an operating system, but in practice, only some of these components are, are used. So what we do is take only these components and put them together into a single operating system image. So that contains only the part of the operating system that is required, only the parts of the libraries that are needed, and only the parts of the application that are actually um, uh, used, right? So we see that as the um, evolution, and would would like to see now unikernels as the um, deployment um, unit uh, in the cloud that could uh, perhaps um, replace um, containers. And here, um, the good thing is that we combine the good parts of both of the previous approaches. So um, we end up with smaller images, uh, with much faster boot times, with, um, of course, tiny memory footprint, as our images are very specialized, um, with very, very fast runtime performance, and much stronger isolation. OK, so let's see how um, Unicraft works. We have uh, some design principles, which are food modularity. Of course, you can uh, imagine why we need modularity here, right? We need to isolate components, so we have to be modular so that we can um, mix and match, right? Then um, we want to run unmodified applications, which means that if you want to move your application to Unicraft from Linux, you should change nothing in your application, right? You don't modify the sources or anything. And of course, we want seamless integration, which means we wanted to make it very, very easy to um, use Unicraft uh, or transition to Unicraft or deploy Unicraft um, and so on. So let's look at each one of them. Um, so for um, full modularity, our um, philosophy is that everything is a micro library. So when we are talking about different functionalities um, combined together, actually in Unicraft, we make uh, we break everything down into very small libraries, we call micro libraries, and that is what we combine. So here you can see the stack. So you have your application, which is a library, and then you have um, the libc, which uh, nowadays we use muscle. Then you have a POSIX compatibility layer, which again is broken down into uh, individual libraries, some uh, OS primitives that uh, implement various parts of the operating system and then the platform layer, and below that, uh, that <laughs> you cannot see here, the architecture layer, even the boot code, the schedulers, all these are broken down into libraries. And you can really choose what you want to use of them and create, put together an image. So I can show you a quick demo. Um, I think I have to drop my microphone so that I can use both hands. <laughs> So here, um, I hope you can you can you can read. Yeah, okay. Um, so here I have my application. It's just a simple hello world, and then I have Unicraft. So I can show you um, what Unicraft looks like. For example, here I have several libraries, um, and uh, the application uh, is a very very simple hello world application, right? So, but if I do. Uh, menu config. So this is the kconfig uh, system that is used also on the Linux kernel, right? So I can use an architecture here. I have cho chosen x86. And then for platform, I use KVM now because I want to, to boot my, my, my VM using QMU. Um, here you can choose from different libraries, right? My application is Hello World, so it doesn't need much. Um, and so on. So anyway, um, then I can build this.
And then I have this uh, very simple QMU script that uh, all it does, it's, uh, it uses my host CPU, right? Only two megabytes of uh, RAM. And then here, um, it just boots my kernel. So if I execute this, um, sorry, I need sudo. Yeah, you can see uh, Unicraft starting and you can see the hello world application that it's just shows the monkey. Um, so, okay. Um, so now you get an idea how you, you, you combine libraries, right? And, and you build your application and so on. Um, we support um, uh, the major architectures. Uh, Risk five is on the way. It's uh, now a pull request that <laughs> we need to review. Um, we support um, major um, platforms and hypervisor used in visualization. Um, KVM-based uh, VMMs like uh, QMU and Firecracker, Zen. Um, we also support VMware and uh, even a Linux user space. So you can even build um, Unicraft unikernels as um, user space ELF images, which is mostly useful for uh, development. Um, then we support um, also, I would say, most uh, major language runtimes, which means that you can run Unicraft applications on top of written on any of these um, languages. So uh, moving on to the next design principle and modified applications, this means that you can run your um, uh, Linux applications uh, on Unicraft. So how we do that, um, you have two ways to do that. One is um, native builds and the other one is through binary compatibility. Um, on the first way, this means that you compile your application together with Unicraft into a single image. So how I show you the hello world that was, uh, was compiled into Unicraft, you can do with any application. Um, and that requires writing some um, glue code to um, not to change anything on the application itself, but to integrate the application to the Unicraft's build system. Um, but after you do that, then everything comes uh, um, together as a single binary image that you can load and execute. Um, of course, for that to work, um, it requires that uh, API compatibility, right? Because your application will make uh, system calls and so on, which means that we need to support POSIX on Unicraft, and we do. Um, POSIX is pretty big, um, around 350 syscalls. We support more than 160, um, which is enough to run um, several, let's say, very popular applications like the ones you see there, um, and also to, to run uh, all these uh, language runtimes that I saw earlier. Um, the fact that we do not support um, all POSIX is uh, because not all syscalls are created equal. Some syscalls are much more um, needed than others, and for some of them you can even get away by returning that it's not implemented, or you can even return um, a, a, a fake success code, and the application will continue running. There is a very interesting talk, if you uh, have interest on this topic, on uh, the last FOSDEM. Um, if you search for Unicraft and FOSDEM 2023, you can find a talk that uh, covers the whole topic about POSIX um, compatibility in operating systems and so on. Um, so yeah, this is how we do it, right? So you build with your standard library as normal. Um, and then, of course, um, on runtime, this will make um, syscalls. We have a syscall sim layer that then will direct, um, uh, will, will um, invoke functions on different micro libraries depending on the, on the syscall, right? The other way is binary compatibility. So um, you can already take a compiled application and have Unicraft load it and run it for you. And of course, this means that Unicraft supports ELF, the binary format that is used on Linux. And we have this uh, app, ELF Loader, uh, which is the application that um, is capable of um, loading and dynamically linking, if necessary, um, ELF objects. Uh, we also have repositories with statically and dynamically uh, compiled binaries of uh, common applications, so you don't have to, to build them yourself. And of course, because Unicraft needs to load this from somewhere, you need to, pro you need to provide your um, uh, libraries and applications um, through either an initRD or a mounted file system. So in case this was not clear, you can take existing Linux images 
and run them on Unicraft, right? Um, so let me show you an example here again. Uh, so here I have again built the uh, Elf Loader application and so on, and I have my QMU script, I think. Yeah, okay, so here you see that I have, um, I'm actually mounting through 9PFS my, um, the root file system of my laptop, right? And I provide this as a mount to Unicraft so that it finds, uh, it can see, now, now Unicraft will be able to see all my file system on my laptop. And then I run here my unikernel with the elf loader. And here, append, I will append in the parameters um, some binary from my, my host system. So if I run this now, for example, with bin ls as a parameter, Unicraft will start, mount my local uh, host file system, right? And then we'll find this executable and execute it. So here. Right? So this is the contents of my host file system. But actually I passed the bin ls from my host, right? Unicraft loaded it, executed it successfully, and then displayed the, the contents. And then I can do this also with, I don't know, date or whatnot, right? Um, also we have some cool functionality. Uh, let me try to show you that. Maybe I have time, maybe not. Uh, let's go to the syscall sim. Let's say that you need to debug something because some system call, um, something is breaks in the application and then you want to see if Unicraft supports the system call or not or what's happening, right? You can go to the syscall, uh, syscall sim and then you can say, okay, um, I want to do something like S-trace. Uh, did that work? Yeah, okay. So let's go again to bin ls. Here, right? So here you can see the output that is the same as uh, running an S trace, and then you can debug potential um, uh, missing syscalls, and then you can come and now just to implement the missing syscall, right? And so on. Um, okay. So, um, design principle number three seamless integration. As I said, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to um, use Unicraft and of course provide higher level tools. Um, we have CraftKit, uh, which is the equivalent of uh, the Docker experience and Kubernetes you know, and all this kind of stuff, which I'm not very familiar with uh, as I work on the kernel side of Unicraft. Um, but with CraftKit you can use uh, is high level tool that you can say, uh, fetch all the libraries, right? And then build my Unicraft image and then run it or deploy it and then show me how many um, instances I have deployed uh, and uh, show me, I don't know, stats and uh, whatnot, right? We support also OCI images uh, for anyone, Kubernetes people around here. Um, and of course, uh, we have a Golang API that uh, you can then uh, programmatically control uh, everything if you wish to do so. Um, moreover, uh, we are now planning to um, release um, uh, Harbor, which is a catalog or repository similar to, to Docker Hub, where we will provide already um, built uh, applications for Unicraft so that then even easier through um, CraftKit, you can say, okay, fetch, I don't know, Nginx or Redis, right, and then, and then deploy it. Um, I can show you a quick demo on CraftKit. I think I still have enough time. Uh, so, what you need to do is to write, um, <clears throat> a YAML file that describes what you want to do. Um, for example, now we want to um, build Hello World. <clears throat> you choose the Unicraft version and then you can specify several targets and uh, platforms and so on. And then you just do like craft uh, package update, uh, which will not do much now because I have already downloaded um, the packages so that I don't um, risk my network not to work during the presentation. 
Um, but as you can see, it tried to update. It found that everything is up to date, right? And then you can do craft build. It asks me here which platform I want and which um, um, architecture. I'll say QMU x86. And now I can do uh, craft run. Again, it will ask me um, uh, what do I want to run, right? And that's it. So um, let's see when we say that Unicraft is faster and smaller and all that, um, uh, how much um, it is, right? Um, so looking at the image size here, uh, we can see different uh, applications uh, com uh, compiled for Unicraft um, with different uh, configuration for the compiler. So it's... Um, the default configuration or with uh, optimizations like uh, link time optimization and dead code elimination and so on. Um, so as you can see, um, Unicraft images are pretty small, right? Um, they are um, below two megabyte in all cases. And depending on the optimizations, then it can be even smaller. Um, you can see a comparison with uh, NGINX um, and you can see that um, the difference is, is pretty big, right? You can deploy your instances much, much faster. Um, boot time, this is uh, Hello World, running on top of different uh, VMMs. <coughs> um, the purple part is the, uh, the time that the VMM takes to start. The, the, the yellow part is how long it takes for Unicraft to start. You will see that in most of uh, the VMMs, the, the VMM time dominates um, the boot time. Unicraft takes much less, except from Firecracker, which is pretty fast. But even then, we're talking about 3.1 milliseconds, right? This is tiny. You can see for comparison um, the boot time of Unicraft compared to uh, optimized Alpine Linux, right? Um, so I would say this is uh, instant, right? You can even cold boot your um, instances on demand when you need them. Um, memory footprint, um, again, you will see that uh, it's uh, similar to the image size, right? It's very, very, very small. You can see it's similar or smaller to Docker, right? So you can consider when it comes to memory consumption, Unicraft almost like a process, right? Even though it's a full operating system. Um, and runtime performance, uh, I think we outperform um, everything else by far. So these are different unikernels. Uh, also, there is Linux and Docker and so on. Um, I think this is, this is the same information, but presented in a kind of uh, more uh, visual way. And uh, this is the request per second on uh, NGINX, right? Uh, so we can serve... Uh, around 300,000 uh, requests per second uh, compared to, I don't know, um, Linux on bare metal, right? Uh, it's almost half uh, and so on. So um, with a single uh, Unicraft instance, you can have the same performance as you would have with, let's say, two instances of uh, Linux and so on. Um, so um, security, of course, is very important for us. And one of uh, our arguments is that Unicraft also provides improved security. Um, so uh, th this um, can be manifested in different ways. One is the attack surface, right? Um, and this is inherent to Unicraft's nature because less lines of code, um, smaller attack surface, right? Less opportunity for uh, vulnerabilities. Um, then, of course, there is the argument of strong isolation, where um, since every instance runs only one application, if you wanted to uh, deploy several applications, instead of putting them into one uh, big monolithic Linux um, instance, you have to put them separate in separate um, Unicraft instances, and then rely on the strong uh, isolation properties of the hypervisor. And, of course, um, we support uh, also um, writing Unicraft libraries in Rust. Um, 
uh, Unicraft is mainly written in C for performance reasons, but of course, uh, for many people, security is more important. So uh, similarly to Linux, now we allow, we, we provide the functionality to write libraries in Rust, so people can, um, depending on their um, requirement, can uh, then take more security uh, and give up a bit of performance and, and so on. Um, our vision is to become eventually on par with uh, modern operating systems like Linux, Android, uh, Darwin, and so on. Um, I will skip these slides. Um, here is a list of security features we already support and many more that are on the way, either in progress or planned. Um, I will not go in detail through this again. Um, okay, let's talk a bit about the uh, OSS community for those uh, who are interested in these things. Um, uh, we have a pretty strong community. Um, we break work down into uh, special interest groups and then people join these different groups and then these are kind of self-organized most of the time and so on. We work on GitHub. Uh, we have a fairly strong uh, engagement in the community, as you can see. Um, we run hackathons in different parts of the world, so perhaps maybe next year in COSCAP also we can try um, to run a two-day workshop here. Uh, we participate in Google Summer of Code. This is the second year that we do that. Um, last year we had three projects. Uh, this year we have five. Um, they have been pretty successful, um, and I would say very interesting as well. Um, and also we do our own Summer of Code every year, which is uh, free to attend, and it's, I think, a five-day five um, uh, workshop, or 10 day, yeah, 10 days. Um, so, of course, there is also um, a considerable amount of research. Um, so, uh, if you have interest in the topic, you can uh, read some of these papers. Um, and uh, just before I close, also, uh, there is a Unicraft startup. Um, so, this is the, the, the people who actually started Unicraft, and they leverage the open source project to um, provide uh, cloud services. Um, it's, a, it's an early startup. We just started less than a year ago. Um, and the main focus is on is the cloud. Um, now we have uh, the um, cloud platform uh, where you can go to this URL and even sign up to get notified when um, uh, will be launched. Uh, I think we target to do that very, very soon. Um, and that's it. So if you would like to join us, um, the QR code points to unicraft.org. Um, you can join us on uh, GitHub, and of course, uh, Discord is where all the communication happens. So if you need support or even would like to propose a project or even come and say, I would like to work on operating systems or on tooling, and I, um, I'm looking for uh, some tasks, um, there is a lot of work to do, right? Um, yeah, social media and the like, of course, uh, for, her, for those who care. And yeah. That's it. Any okay. questions? Any questions? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, embedded environment. Yes. Yeah. In fact, um, in before I joined uh, the Unicraft startup, I was working um, in uh, the automotive industry, and uh, there we deployed Unicraft on top of a hypervisor for embedded for ARM system on chip. Um, in general, we have also a track on uh, embedded. Um, so we want to be able to even run without a hypervisor. It, it is possible, really. You can, you can run, uh, especially on ARM, at least that's where I have most expertise. You can boot Unicraft um, bare metal. Um, some people have uh, done it on Raspberry Pi. Um, and then it boils down to drivers, right? Of course, for simple drivers like UART, uh, I2C, SPI, and so on, it's trivial. Uh, it, it, you either find them there or you can implement it yourself. But then, of course, if you want more complex things, uh, yeah, it depends, right? Uh, no one will uh, port, I don't know, the graphic stack of Linux into <laughs> a unikernel, right? Uh, yeah. uh, but if you have some specific uh, interest on embedded, also we can take it offline afterwards and discuss more. OK, thank you. Any question? I think I can. Uh, we can take another one if you have uh, no
Then I personally have no question. <laughs> okay. uh, actually, there, there's a question on Slido. Uh, it, it's like, uh, we, we, we saw many pros to use uh, unikernel, but uh, is there any cons when you create, create so many unikernels? Of course, there are no cons. <laughs> um, so yeah, it depends. Um, what, so it really depends on what is your use case, right? Uh, we uh, Drivers, first of all, is one um, point, as I already mentioned, right? Um, right now, we use VitIO, mostly, uh, which means that you require also um, the devices side that will provide you the backend for VitIO. Um, in visualization, that is uh, normally not a big deal because VitIO now becomes a de facto standard. Uh, but if you want to run it on uh, non-visualized platforms, then drivers uh, is something that requires work. There is an interest group about drivers because we don't want to, to, to write drivers from scratch, right? It's a lot of work. What we want to do is take existing drivers from other BSD licensed operating systems and easily port them to Unicraft, which means that this most likely is going to be a driver sim layer. And um, if there is interest, uh, there is an interest group, a bit, a bit dormant because we don't have enough people to take this, right? But if uh, people have interest into um, this uh, item, um, it is an open topic. Um, other cons, I would say, uh, traditionally it's a bit hard to build unikernels in the sense of um, taking an existing application and bringing it to Unicraft. But as you see, um, for us, it's a, a major area of focus to make it easy. So we provide several ways from the lowest level, which is to, to, to write your own glue on the build system to, to compile everything together, to the elf loader, to, to just, just boot an existing binary, to the higher level uh, tools like CraftKit and so on. So while this is a well-known cone of unikernels, because by all means, we are not the first unikernel out there. Um, we are trying hard to, to, to tackle this and make it easier. Um, I think these are the, the major um, uh, areas of concern I can think of. Thank you. OK, so uh, OK. Uh, last, last one. Uh, about the uh, embedded platform. Uh, does Unicorn support a CPU without MMU? Like you talk, yeah. Sure. Um, so this falls also into the realm of uh, embedded, right? Um, so that could be maybe a Cortex M if we're talking about ARM. Um, we don't support it, but we would like to support it. Um, in general, it shouldn't be too hard for someone uh, to, to write um, the. Um, you need to write the corresponding, let's say, architecture uh, and platform libraries. And then all the rest is there for you. But it shouldn't be too hard. All you need to do is to uh, write the MPU um, uh, driving part, I, I think. Um, and perhaps, depending on whether you use a 32 or 64 bit, uh, you will have more or less work to do. Because Unicraft is fairly new. We don't want to carry legacy, right? So if you, do, if you take a 64 bit, uh, microcontroller, things will be easier for you. If you want to do 32-bit, you might suffer a bit more with also porting other code that is 64-bit uh, uh, now uh, written. Yeah. OK, uh, we, uh, time's up. So uh, I, I think that's all for uh, Mihalis. So let's give him a uh, big hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.